set limits this year and you're going to set new records. Financial limits, mental limits, psychological limits. You're going to make more money this year than last year. There's a God that with us. The God that Ben steel is with us. El Shaddai is with us. This year, the God of heaven has crossed over with you. The God that can consume the enemy has crossed over with you. We are not in this battle by ourselves. I see lands being purchased. I see homes being purchased. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have it entered into the heart of man. The things I have ordained for you for 2020. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Precious Jesus. I want to talk today about giving birth to prophecy. Jesus. Giving birth to prophecy. You can have it to to um second Samuel chapter 5 giving birth to what to prophecy well I don't want to hurt my ears I don't want to damage my voice my voice is my gift I can't hurt my voice well just fix it second Samuel chapter 5 verse 20 thank you Hallelujah. My, my voice is, is my gift to God. Amen? I can't rule my voice. Praise God. Some people, people work with their hands. Some people work with different things. I work with my voice. So my voice, I need to have a, uh, my voice. Giving birth to prophecy. And um, before I go to 2 Samuel chapter 2, let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. Prophecy is like a vehicle. It needs a car to move it forward. Prophecy is like a vehicle. It needs a what? Yeah. Oh, you need a man, I should say. A driver, that's, that's better, to move it forward. Prophecy is like a car in the driver to move it forward. And many people receive prophetic words and some people don't know what to do. Um, the Lord cor correct me this morning about, because um, I, was, I was saying, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what 20 20 will bring me. And God said, no. <laughs> no, you have to make 2020 bring you something. You can't just sit back and just hoping that it will show up and say, hey, I'm here. No, you got you to you demand it to happen. You, you, you got to fight for what belong to you. Amen? There, there's a fight. There's a fight. There's a natural there's a fight in the spirit. Come on. There's a fight in the spirit because there are um, resistant in the spirit and they're resistant in the natural. They are resistant in the spirit and they're resistant in the natural. Amen? That's why we, we decide that eight, um, 19 years ago that every January we're going to fast and we're going to pray and we're going to condition our spirit. Hallelujah. A number, of month, a number of months ago I had this dream and the dream blessed me so much. Bless me so much. That's why praying in tongues is so important. Because when you pray in tongues, you subdue um, invisible forces. I said, when you pray in tongues, you are subduing what? Invisible forces. And these invisible forces was designed to stop you physically from moving forward. Invisible force of the enemy was designed to stop you from moving forward. God gave you a dream. He started to set the dream in motion. All of a sudden, natural laws come against you. 
It could be political laws that evil politicians set in motion. They, 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 they sign a signature with a pen that affects you, the natural. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and we, we all deal with these things. By, by evil men set things in motion because um, demons um, influence them. I want to talk to you today. I want to open my heart to you in this room here. So we can pray and be bold and make declaration. And knowing that your words are making impact in the realm of the spirit. Say my words are making impact in the realm of the spirit. Never, never think that your words are not doing nothing. There are things in your words. There's faith in your words. There's power in your words. There's the Holy Ghost in your words. And when you release those words, something is happening in the realm of the spirit. So one night I, went to, I was sleeping. And um, I don't know what happened, but I'm glad it happened. Because, because, see, we are more than flesh and bones. We are one-third Holy Ghost. God lives big on the inside of you. So I was, I was sleeping, and um, I knew in the, in, when I was sleeping, an evil presence came into my bedroom. And right away, my, it was like a force left my spirit and subdued that thing. And it left the room while I was sleeping. Say, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Where's my church? I say, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. You see, I want to train you in such a way that your spirit man is so strong that your spirit man is fighting for you while you're physically resting. I'm, Rokosa. I'm talking about your spirit man. Your spirit man. Where your spirit man, the Holy Ghost can give you. Can I talk to you here? The Holy Ghost can give you spirit instruction where your spirit can protect people. Where your spirit can protect people. Where you're physically resting, God can give you. I'll show you in the Bible. God can give your spirit an assignment. Watch over this one. Protect this one. This one is not strong enough to subdue the enemy. Oh my God. Allow my, allow, I, I want to use your spirit like a bottle axe. I want to use your spirit as a weapon of war to subdue the enemy. Amen. I was talking to my, to, to my, um, my daughter, Michaela. Is today, you know, and um, she was she was with a friend. She she's dating this guy, and you know they're getting serious. You know, which is all good. I, I love the young man. And I love his parents. Tremendous man, 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 a woman of God. And um, and I realized something, and I really believe that's why living faith um, has to be the way we are, and we're not gonna change. We got to be bold in the spirit. Living fit, we're not going to be some community church, amen. We're going to be a bold apostolic church. We're not here. We're not here. We're not here. We're not here to 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 just to um. We we're, we're here to take over. We're here to tell the devil you don't cross this line. Come on, talk to me here. We're not. I don't want to just be a nice community pastor. No, 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 no. Don't call me to. To, to take your cat down from your tree? I'm not that type of pastor. <laughs> Come on. Pastor, my cat's stuck in the tree. Can you come? I'm not coming. Climb up in the tree yourself and get your cat to come down. She was sharing with me that um, did this the whole, whole her boyfriend, her, her boyfriend, dad, you know, because when we were here, when we were here, the first service they came to our church, and I met them, and um, she, he, this man didn't even know me. He came to our church. He told me something. He said, "Man of God, we, 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 that's where we're having the, the issue 
in both our location. But he's strong in deliverance. The gift of the son, the spirit is strong in his, in his life. The first time he came to church, he said, I want to talk to you. Because I see two snakehead in your church. One in Vernon and one in Colonia. And says, the Lord said, when you cut off those snakehead, you're going to see a, a peace in your ministry. Who am I talking to? Complete stranger. I want God to raise you up that way. Where you can be so sharp in the spirit. Come on. Say, I'm sharp in the spirit. I cut deep in the spirit. Come on. Say, I am sharp in the spirit. I cut deep in the spirit. Well, your spirit is so strong. You walk into a room and devils start to leave the place. Because you're strong in the realm of the spirit. Come on. Jesus, Jesus was strong in the spirit. Apostle Paul was strong in the spirit. That one time Paul was preaching and, and this girl come around and she was saying the right thing to him. These men came to a city to tell us the way of salvation, the good thing. But the Bible said the thing annoyed Paul for three days. And Paul said, come out of her. Cast out the devil while she was saying the right thing. There are people in these last days going to say the right thing, but they're full of the devil. Say strong in spiritual things. Say strong in spiritual things. Come on, say strong in spiritual things. Remember now, Sunday night is meat night. Come on. Sunday night is Holy Ghost night. Sunday night where God starts to feed you something that you can be strong to give birth to you, Isaac. But, but this, this man, is, he's, he's a medical doctor. And he's in Vancouver. And, and, and he said that he said that the Holy Ghost wake him up. He, he said, go on, go, go on your property. Go on your property. Go on your property. Okay, he's, a, he's a man of God, but he's a medical doctor. He said, go on your property. I want to show you there are some things that have been holding clients back. There are things that are holding clients, clients back. Mamroso Topra. He said, go on your property. Go on your property. Go on your property. So he went on the property, started to walk on the property, and, and he saw, and this is Canada. This is not Africa. There are some folks think, oh yeah, Pastor Wicks, all you talk about this happened in Haiti and the Caribbean, but this is Canada. The devil is a liar. There are more demons than in Africa. Demons are holding your spouses back. Demons holding your money back. Come on, talk to me here. Legal papers back. Promotion back. This man, is in Vancouver. Went to Vancouver. God said, wake up, wake up, wake up. Go, go down to your property. He went there and, and, they, were, and they were like, that witchcraft on his property. Chicken feet on his property. This is Canada. Chicken feet on his property. And God said, you remove that. Because this is what's stopping things from happening. I was in Switzerland. Switzerland. A lady came to my... These are Swiss people. German people. I'm preaching. As I'm preaching, a woman rolling her eyes. Just talking like this. But when your spirit is strong, there are things leaving your spirit and cutting things away from people's life. Her eyes started to roll back. Shit, the floor started to move like a snake. I wasn't in Africa, I was in Switzerland. One lady started to somersault with her touching the ground. You hear me? You heard just tell you? She was somersaulting with her feet touching the ground. I wasn't in Brazil, I was in Switzerland. But it is a deception. And um, the minds of, that's why, that's why God wants you to be strong. Because there are forces that want to stop you from rising. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Men went and removed those things. He showed to Michael, he showed to his son, said, the, the Lord showed this to me. And this property, witchcraft stuff. 
to stop the man from excelling. The Bible says Elisha destroyed the altars. The demonic altars that can be set up. And it could cause, it's amazing how folks doesn't believe in this kind of stuff. They say, well, come on, pastor, you know, you just a little too much. Really? Come on, pastor, come on, come on, man, this, this, this is too much. Really, man. This cannot be true. I have a, have a, have a friend of mine in Montreal. This is Canada now, right? But he, he's also from Haiti. And um, this, this witch doctor, he, he, no, he's a pastor. And he said that um, he had the ability to drink certain things. And immediately he become a fly. And he would fly to Washington. Land in the Oval Office. And influence the president. Land in Congress. And influence Congress to make certain laws. That's endorsed the work of darkness. But he made a statement. He said that. Whenever he come across a strong praying church. He lose his power. But he said. He said. Weak Christians, he loved weak Christians. But whenever you come across a strong church, whether the church is five members or, or two members, he, he said that he said that they, they he just messes, he said he just messes up his activity. He said one time he couldn't even come back into his physical body. He was trapped as a fly. Because somebody was praying. Are you in this place here? My friend Bishop Oedebo was with him. He told me, son, I wish you were here. I wish you were here. I wish you were here. He said, I walk my property. That there's no evil bats can, land, can fly off my property. And one time, one bat did to fly. And it just dropped dead. So we're talking about giving birth to the prophecy that God's given you. Giving birth because there, there are things many times that it is, is stopping the progress. Stopping from moving forward. But we're going to pray. And we're going to take our destiny serious. Who am I talking to? So Paul is talking to his young son Timothy. He said, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. According to the prophecy which went before thee. See, prophecy when it's released, it goes before you. It goes ahead of you to make the crooked place straight. Prophecy, it goes ahead of you. It comes on you, it goes ahead of you. It said here, the prophecy which goes before thee. Thank you. <laughs> That thou may what? That thou may what? War a good warfare. He said, take the prophecy and fight a good warfare. Come on, talk to me here. Take the prophecy and fight a good warfare. Take the word of God, the word that burns your heart, the word that you believe, then you got to fight with it. You got to fight with it. You got to put it in your mind, put it in your spirit, and talk about it. Woo! So you, you, you fight with prophecy. You, you, you take the prophecy and, and, and you, you set your goals and you pray about them. And, and you, you force the earth to receive them. You command the situation. You, you have to change. Hallelujah. And then you, you, what do you do? You, you condition your spirit 
so they can be what I call spiritual stamina. You don't just quit. You, you stay the course until, there's a, until there is a birthing. You stay the course until there's a manifestation. Come on, talk to me here. You stay the course. You stay the course until there's a breakthrough. Don't just, you don't just quit on your dreams. That's, I, I, I love the story of, uh, uh, of, of Thomas Edison. He failed so many times. Failed, 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 failed. But he had a dream from God. I look at all the men and women who have impacted our generation. They, they stayed the course. There was something in their mind and in their heart that was convinced them. Maybe God give you a business idea. May God give you a dream for something. You gotta stay the course. I will stay the course. So, so you, you have to, the prophecy has gone before you, and you take that prophecy and you fight with it. And you, you don't quit. You don't stop until the manifestation. You don't stop until there's a breakthrough. Come on. Because you, you have to tell the devil, you, you know, you know. You you gotta you gotta you touch the wrong person. <laughs> you touch the wrong family. But you can't do that if your spirit is not strong. That's why I, I teach like this because because I'm I'm talking to world changers. I'm talking to nation shakers. I'm talking to people who can influence the heavens. Come on, talk to him here. People who can influence the heavens, like people who are what I call the Elijah spirit. I said, the Elijah anointing. Come on, talk to me here. Let's, let's go and look at this man of God. First Kings. First Kings. First Kings. First Kings chapter 18. Giving birth to prophecy. Giving birth to prophecy. In verse 41. Please tell me if you're here. First Kings chapter 18, verse 41. Elijah said unto Ahab. Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. His spirit pick it up. His spirit pick up something good is about to happen. He having rain almost three and a half years. Matter of fact, he's the same guy that prayed that the heavens will be sealed. Now, now he pick up in the signal by the Holy Ghost, rain is coming. Or, uh, in our case, God give us a word in 2020 about breaking limits and setting records. Get that word in your spirit. Get it into your spirit. So, Elijah received a word from the Lord. And Elijah said to Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink. <laughs> My God. For there is, a, there is a sound of abundance of rain. He, he, he heard in the spirit. Rain is coming. And he declared it. A number of years ago, I was teaching in the Bible school in this city here about um, declaring what's in your heart. Because the Bible says, with your heart, man, believe. Amen? You believe. But for it to manifest, you have to declare it. You have to decree thing. The uh, Bible says, thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be established unto thee. There's some time I walk, there, I walk my house just, just declaring things that I wrote in my book. Declaring things. I declare things. I declare things. So, this day woman I was teaching in the Bible school about prophetically declaring things. What God revealed to you. Okay, it's not just good to, to have it in your head. Or have it in your heart. You have to declare it. No, no, this is Elijah talking to Ahab. And Ahab said unto, Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink. For there is a sound... Of abundance of rain. And in the natural, there was no sign of it. 
There were no sign that rain is coming. But the man of God, oh, come on, come on. The man of God pick up in the spirit that God is releasing rain. But in order for rain to come, you have to be bold to declare it. There's no time for sacred questions. God declare what's in your heart. It might be mocked by, by, by people. But you got to declare it. I declare we're going to own this building in the name of Jesus. Until you decree it, God cannot endorse it. Amen? God decree it. Must be, I don't know, pass that on. No, no, no. Hear from God. Don't be presumptuous. Get a word from God. And, and decree it. Watch what God do. So we're teaching the Bible school and, and, and about prophetically decreeing things, what you see. So, and, 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 and many times, you know, I, I was very, you know, sometimes in the things of God, you, you grow in the things of God. Say, I'm growing in the things of God. And, and, and many times God will show you visions. Internal vision, pictorial vision. You see things. You see what God is up to. You come in a dream. You, you, you see what God is up to. But then you have to talk about it. You have to be bold to declare it. Sometimes, maybe not to people, but declare it to yourself. Declare it to the atmosphere. Go for a walk to the talk to the atmosphere. And you tell the atmosphere how things are going to be. Come on. Hallelujah. You tell the atmosphere how things are going to be. You decree to the atmosphere. Because sometimes you tell some people, they're like, mm -hmm, really? <laughs> really? But you always tell the atmosphere. So I was teaching along this line, and this woman told me this amazing story. She said, oh my goodness. She said, last week I was at this church, and um, I saw this woman. She was an usher, and she was taking the offering. And she said, I saw her, and she was so beautiful. And she had the most beautiful full set of hair. And so I'm looking at this woman, and I was so fascinated by her hair. So beautiful. I said, wow, wow. And when she just rubbed her eyes, she looked, and the woman was completely bald because of cancer. The Bible tells us the Lord thy God do nothing until he reveal it. God do nothing until he reveal it to someone. I said, if you have been bold enough to declare what you see, her hair will start growing back. Come on. You got to decree what God is saying. So that's what Elijah did. So that's why we're going to get together as a family for 21 days. And we're going to make some declaration. I'm going to give some things to pray about. But I want for you to, to, to write down the, the things that God is talking to you about. About your family. About your situation. And you come out to pray. And we start to make some declaration about, about breaking limits. And setting records. Come on. Hallelujah. You will get together. I want to encourage you. Every night, come out and, and come out at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, right? And we're going to pray. We're going to fast. And we're going to make some declaration. And, and if things work. There's a greater acceleration when we work together. And we make declaration about our ministry, about our city, about our country, and about yourself, your own personal life. Can I say amen? So look at Elijah. We have to go to work. Look at Elijah here. And uh, so he told Ahab to get up. I heard the sound of a bond rain. He didn't just say, okay, rain is coming. God said it. <laughs> no, you got to make it happen. You got you to fight with the prophecy. If you believe the prophecy, you got to fight with the prophecy. One of the words that God gave us 
in, in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 20, and David came to Balparism, and David smote them there, and said, the Lord have break forth upon my enemies before me, as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of the place Balparism. It, it, it's the place of miracle. It's a special place. It's a special miracle. God want to grant you this year a special miracle. I say God want to grant you this year a special miracle. Like for example, Isaac. Isaac was 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 um um what is his name? Abraham Belperism. It was something special. Joseph was that to Abraham to Jacob. And God want to grant you that this year. Come on. I said, God want to grant you that this year. Let me tell you something about prophecy. Prophecy has no name attached to it. Prophecy has no expiration date. I was in Switzerland. And this taught me so much. I was in Switzerland. And the church in Switzerland, they, they had just a crazy reputation. They take the prophecy literally and they go to war on it. They record it and they go to war and they fight and they fight. and So many crazy miracles in that church. But one particular day, I was just ministering and I just looked to the crowd. And there was a couple at the back and I just saw, I saw, you know, I can't explain. I just saw the word February just over the head. So I called them forward. And I started to prophesy about them that God's going to give them a special miracle in the month of February. But the more I talked to them, I recognized there was a problem. Their unbelief was so strong, they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe that God can bless them. I'm like, just, just receive the word. They were fighting with the word. And the more I talked about it, I said, oh, God, I mean, they can't receive it. I said to myself, I'm not going to be here um, trying to convince them what God was saying. It, it was too much for their brain. But another couple in the service, they said to themselves, if they don't want to receive his word, I'm going to receive his word. The Bible said, believe the Lord thy God, it shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall break forth. You shall have your bell parism. You shall have the breach of waters, the breaking forth of waters. Come on, talk to me here. Amen. They received the prophecy for themselves. And they said, they were driving home. They told me this. They were driving home. They said, that word, if that couple don't want, I receive it. And they told God, Lord, God gave them some instruction to go on a 21-day fast. And they start to fast and say, Lord, what do you want us to receive? Because you spoke to us that, that February is going to be our month. God didn't talk to them. God talked to someone else. But they received that word. And they told the Lord, Lord, we want to have another child. I said, my goodness. Were they in November? February 1st, she became pregnant. See, you have a picture of this, of this couple here. That's Donald Trump. That's all of them. The one, I'm sure, you, this one here. His name is Everton. Huh? This one here. This one here, one of them. The youngest one. They call him Everton. When the Switzerland is Everton with blue eyes. Calls all kind of parliament Facebook. One summer come, my wife and say, um, so Everton, what's going on? How come there's a child in his My wife said, it's okay. It's okay. There's no funny business. It's okay. <laughs> they believe. 
believe the word. They believed the word. And it wasn't for them. So I was sharing this prophecy on Facebook. And my graphic designer in India, he said, Pastor Weeks, are you telling me that this couple in Switzerland? I said, yes. He said, can that work for me? I said, if you believe it, it's possible. See, all things are possible. They took the prophecy and they fight with the prophecy. They took the prophecy and they fight with the prophecy. So look what, look what Elijah did. He said he heard the sound of abundance of rain and, and, and Ahab went up and, and read from verse 42. One, two, three, go. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Say birthing. Say birthing. Can you put the scripture up so I can read it? Say birthing. It's it's second first Kings chapter eighteen, verse what? Verse forty two. Can you put it up for me, please? And Elijah said, on, okay, and, and Ahab went up and ate and drank. And Elijah went up to Mount Carmel and cast himself down on the earth and put his face between his knees. He's doing something. He gave the prophecy, but he decided to give birth to the prophecy. You have to give birth. See, in the realm of the spirit, whatever you give birth to stays with you. Mamro kosata. Whatever you give birth to stays with you. Stay connect, and no one can take it from you. No one can steal it from you. Whatever you give birth to stays with you. So he went to Mount Carmel. Cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Kushatara. And he started to pray. He started to pray. And he said unto his servant, go now and, and look towards the sea. And when he went up and he looked and said, there is nothing. But then discourage Elijah because he knew what he was doing. He knows what he was doing. You know, heat, touch the water, evaporation take place. They went up, they formed clouds. Come on, talk to me. The man of God started to pray, had a vision in his mind. I'm praying. I'm praying there must be breakthrough. I'm going to break some limits. I'm going to set some goals. I'm going to break some limits. I'm going to set some records. Come on. I'm going to set some records spiritually. I'm going to, I'm going to break some limits. Everything, the one who limit me, limit me from rising, I'm going to shatter those things by the Holy Ghost. That's what Elijah did. That's what Elijah did. And he had the victory. He had the victory. Let's keep going here. And he went and he said, go seven times. Go seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time. He said, and behold, there arise it, a little cloud oh, out of the sea like a man's hand. There were no rainers, but he's a prophet. He's, he's praying. And he said, he said, go. And, and he said unto, he said, go and send to Ahab, prepare the chariot. And get down thither. And he said here, and he said, the rain stop him not. Verse 45. And it came to pass. Why? Oh my God. And it came to pass. And it came to pass in the meantime, while the heavens, the heavens became black with the clouds and wind. 
and there was a great what rain and he, and and he, and Ahab rode and he went to Jezreel. Look at this here. The heavens became black with clouds and wind. And there was a great what? Rain. Come on. While the brother is on his knees, he said, go and check and see. He said, boss, there is nothing. Well, I, there must be something. There must be something. I, I, I see it in my spirit. I see it in my mind. I see the breakthrough already. There must be something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I look and there is nothing. Oh, look again. There, there must be a blackness. There must be cloud. There must be a wind. There must be great rain. Something must happen. Because I see it in my spirit. 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 You've come too late to tell me it's not possible. I see it in my spirit. I see it in my spirit. I see it in my mind. The atmosphere might be, look, it might be a contradiction to what in my spirit. But I close my eyes and I trust my inner eyes. I close my eyes. I trust the pictures in my mind. Rain must come. Cloud must come. Come on, talk to me here. He started to pray. That the heavens was black. And the clouds and the wind. And there was a great rain. The Bible didn't tell us how long Elijah was there for. But he was there long enough for, 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 for the place to become black. For clouds to appear in the sky. Hallelujah. And the Bible says we, we, we have Elijah was just a man, a natural human being who prayed and closed the heavens and he prayed again earnestly. He prayed earnestly. That's why we, we pray earnestly at living faith. Come on. We don't, we don't pray like, that's not prayer. I don't know what that is, but that's not prayer. That's something else. But we don't pray like that living faith. Well, at my old, that's not your old church. This is not your old church. We, we pray like Elijah prayed. You want to get Elijah result? Pray like Elijah. You want, you want to get Ahab result? Eat and drink. You cannot act like Ahab and get Elijah results. Come on, talk to me here. The brother put his, his head between his knees and pray and pray. And James said, we are just like Elijah. We're just like Elijah. Let, let's look at what James said. James chapter 3, verse 16. Come on, talk to me. That's why we're, we're going to pray like that this week. We're going to pray. We're going to pray fervently. We're going to pray. We're going to pray fervently. I said we're going to pray fervently. It said here, um, let's go to verse 17. Thank you, Vanessa. Verse 17. I don't know. Hang on for a second. Think about the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. Oh, it's five. It's five, right? Five, five, seventeen. I'm sorry. Five, seventeen. Mando shota vraka shata. Well, that's good. Well, what what fifteen says? Okay, good. It's a confess your fault one to another and pray one for another that that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent 
prayer of the righteous person avail much. The Amplified Bible, see the Amplified Version, it said the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous caused tremendous power to be available, dynamic in his working. The effectual fervent prayer. So, number one was we have the prayer because we know that we're righteous. Say, I'm righteous. You are not righteous because you are, you are so good. You're righteous because of Jesus. You have his righteousness. And the Bible said that, that that's why you can pray earnestly. You can pray bold prayer. You can pray bold prayer uh, uh, with conviction. Because there's a fire in your belly. Come on, talk to me. You pray earnestly. You pray, you pray with fire. And um, earnestly mean with, with prayer with, with conviction. Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayer. Cause tremendous power to be available. Fervent prayer. Prayer with deep conviction. You know, I, I, I've been with my wife in a, in a delivery room for all of my children. When a woman is giving birth, she don't care what she look like. Don't care about her makeup. Woman is in labor pain. You don't say, sweetheart, get me my, my makeup brush and my powder. No, no. Give her those answers. She take her shoes off. She take her coat off. Come on, talk to me here. She take all of the hindrance off. I'm about to give birth to something. She don't call her husband's husband, get the makeup, please. Get the powder. What kind of nonsense is that? No, 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 no. There's something in your belly that they come out. There's destiny. There's breakthrough. Come on. There's healing. You know, my wife told me today. She said, honey, guess what? They put over the kids. I said, what? She said, I, sh I showed them the Reynolds Bunky video. I said, which video? The one where, where the man raised from the dead. I say, bro, koshata. The kids watch a video of a man that was raised, our children, Sunday school, of a man that was raised from the dead in Bunky's meeting. This man had an accident. He was in the morgue, embalmed in a casket. But there was a praying wife. Say, I'm not going to let you go. Not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. Not going to let you go. She said, I just can't let him go. You know what she did? She went to the funeral home and tell the funeral director, give me the body. I'm going to take the, I'm going to bury my husband. She took the, she said, okay, take the body. Come on. The, the man was in the casket with cotton in the nose. But there was something in her belly. The effectual fervent prayer caused tremendous power to be available. The kids watch that today. I'm going to raise this champion in our youth group. Amen. They took the man to Bunky's meeting in a casket. Put him in the basement while Bunky was preaching. The man that was dead for four days started to sneeze. Start to breathe again. And the man sit up as I was in heaven. And the Lord told him, you got to go back. Because your wife wouldn't allow you to stay. 
Oh, my God. Your wife wouldn't allow you to stay. It's so effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. And then they interview him, they interview her. She said, I just couldn't let him go. She said, I'm pregnant. I couldn't see myself raising this baby by myself. And the scripture came back, the woman, 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 get the dead back to life. She keep praying that. And God granted a miracle. I'm saying here that, 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 that when something is in your spirit, like I was, I, was so, I was so blessed hearing you guys pray for my son, Elijah. And, and how you guys were praying. You know, it, it's, it's a blessing. Because God loved fervent prayer. I said, God loved fervent prayer. Heartfelt prayer. Continued prayer. Cause tremendous power to be available. Heartfelt, say heartfelt. Continuous. Prayer of the righteous causes tremendous power to be available. Oh, Lord, I love you. So that's what we'll be doing this week, starting tomorrow. And we're going to have some out outline for you. And uh, I want to encourage you. Right, you know, I was so blessed by Trisel. She, she brought, during the Continent to Greatness, she brought her dream board. Oh my goodness. I took it home under my bed. I've been praying for it. I should be here today to give back to her. But she have a, what she's trusting God for in 2020. In details. In pictures. You know. And now my kids are now going to get their dream board. Inspired by Trisel. And, and then looking at Trisel's dream board, she challenged me so much. I need, to, I need to work on my dream board. I want to encourage you. Get your dream board out. Put it in your bedroom. Come on. Put it in your make it details of what, what you're trusting God for. And break some limits. Set some records. Hallelujah. You got to give God something to work with. So God can do something. In closing, I want to put this thought into your mind. Believe big. Say, I will believe big. The size of your success is determined by the size of your belief. You can have, I get some folks get mad about this statement, but I don't really care. You can have anything you want in the kingdom if you can give up the belief that you cannot have it. Believe big. I will believe big. The size of your success or the size of your breakthrough is determined by the size of your belief. You can have anything you want in the kingdom if you're willing to give up the belief that you cannot have it. Some of those beliefs you have to give up is those limited thinking. Hallelujah. So tomorrow night, I want to encourage you to come out. And um, we can just start to set this in motion for 21 days. Let's stand on our feet. Oh, precious Jesus. You can stand. To purchase your complete copy of this life-changing message or other messages from Apostle Everton Weeks, visit our online store at mlmi.org that's mlmi.org or by phone at 1-250-763-2993 come join us live Kelowna BC Canada or any of our church locations and remember life without purpose is just an experience